Bam! How's everybody doing today? Last Outrider here with the next part of Warhammer The End Times. We're going to start out now with, I believe, the Lizard Men. Here is their take on what's happening. Advocate Tecto, speaker of Hoaxatl's Sacred Council, knelt silently before the Golden DS. A telepathic summons had brought him to mighty Mazdamundi's meditation chamber, and he had expected to find the slan already awoken. Instead, the Great One remained motionless, save for the steady rise and fall of his chest. Tecto could not tell whether Mazdamundi was lost in meditation or to dreaming. And there was no way to know until the slan chose to grant him enlightenment. It mattered not to Tecto. The speaker had been summoned, and he would attend upon Mazdamundi, wakeful or not, until dismissed. Tecto felt the humid mists of the chamber stir as another entered through the golden gateway. The newcomer wore the feathered mantle of Coetzel, he who protects, proclaiming his sacred duty to safeguard Tlaxicban. Turning away from silent Mazdamundi, Tecto rose to his feet and offered the ritual bow of greeting, as was protocol. The war leader Krakgar confirms that the Dark Ones cluster about the City of Echoes in great numbers, proclaimed High Scale Chief Inkwala. He requires reinforcements to contain them. Despite the stifling warmth of the meditation chamber, Tecto felt a chill settle upon his scales. Nothing had been the same since the twin-tailed comet had returned. Already, Ratman had begun to rise around Itzla and Texakiklan. And now, ruined Zahutek was once more under the sway of the old enemy. Tightening his grip on his staff of office, the priest calmed himself. Cold times were ahead, but the Great Ones would guide them through the chill as they had always done before. Three grand cohorts were granted to him already this lunar cycle, he told Inkwala. This breaks all precedent. Indeed, the other replied. Yet, still he requires more. Many have fallen in Zahutek's defense. Kratgar asks that the Thunderscale cohort be allowed to bask in the heat of battle. <clears throat> Tecto's eyelids slid closed over bulbous eyes. The Thunderscale cohort were Hexotl's foremost guardians and not lightly sent to fight elsewhere. Is the situation that dire? The war leader believes so, Nkwala replied. Already, the geomantic web shutters with the Dark One's presence, he said, at last, opening his eyes. Krakgar shall have what he requests. He, his instincts have never failed us before. We should heed them now. I shall give the order, Nkwala confirmed, turning to leave the chamber. Wait! boomed Mazdamundi. The word echoed around the chamber, halting Nkwala in his tracks. Both skinks turned to look upon the slam roused at last from his silence. 
Tecto felt warmth enfold him as the Great One made telepathic contact. <coughs> Images flooded through Tecto's minds. Scenes of slaughter and destruction, of jungles afire, and temple cities cast into ruin. He saw the cursed moon loom low over the skies, heard the chittering of rats, felt the cruel laughter of the Dark Ones in his mind. He witnessed two elves, one dark, one light, duel across a sea of skulls, whilst around them great armies gave battle without quarter. That vision quickly faded, replaced by images of human cities overrun by grasping vines and twisted trees. Across the world, the dead of ages tore free from their graves, mustering beneath one oppressive will. Tecto saw the mountains fall and the seas rise, the land torn asunder and the skies shatter. In the end, darkness swallowed all. The telepathic contact severed abruptly, and Tecto fell forward against his ceremonial staff, his breathing shallow and weak. What is it? What did you see? Nkwala asked, the feathers of his headdress bobbing as his head twitched from side to side. Tecto trembled as he sought the words to describe the vision. But already the images were fading from his mind. They scattered like the echoes of dreams, even as the priest tried to recall them, leaving behind only a memory of stark terror. Fire and destruction, Tecto muttered weakly. The comet is no omen of hope. It is a portent of doom. You speak the impossible, Nkwala objected. The comet is Sotek's sign. Tehenuen declared it to be so, and the Great Ones confirmed it. And perhaps Sotek returns, Tecto rejoined. But the comet brings only death. There can be no stopping what is coming. This cannot be, countered Inkwala. The great plan! The priest fell silent as Mandamundi's corpulent bulk shifted upon the dais. The great plan has failed. The slan intoned heavily. The exodus must begin. So there you go. More indication to you that I believe we are heading for a time where there is no longer 40K and Warhammer. Very soon, we will simply have Warhammer. And the rule sets will be able to be combined into one. One of the big things that kept them apart was psychics and magic. But now both systems, now that 40K has a similar system that can easily, easily be incorporated into Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And now we have the storylines. The slan are the old ones. That's what it says in Rogue Trader First Edition. And Sotek is probably just one of the other uh, slan, the space slan. According to the, uh, if, if you can go watch my video on, uh, on uh, 40K First Edition, according to it, there were two types of slan. There were the primitive slan, who lived on planets amongst humans and races and everything like that. And then there were the technologically advanced slan, who flew around in spaceships 
and built the webway and fun stuff like that. My guess, Sotek is one of those. And he's about to return. And the great plan is over. It is time for this land slash old ones to return to the 40k universe. As they leave behind Warhammer World, they travel back across the galaxies, uh, as probably the Tyranid, and reappear in the 40k universe. All you need is a few little rule tweaks, and you got it! One uh, unified game. We'll see what happens. Until next time! Which we will talk about the beginning of the end. Bye. Mm -hmm.